we'll need to find boards that will satisfy the width of 15 inches wide by 21 inches long. We'll not find material 15 inches wide. You will need to add multiple widths of multiple boards to arrive at the rough width. You also need to find boards that will satisfy a width of 14 inches wide by roughly 14 inches long. In this case, I'm using poplar. Check your material for splits, checks, knots, warps, twists, bark. If the knots are tight, they're okay to use. Crop your boards to the rough length, 14 inches. 28 inches, 49 inches, and 70 inches. One times the width of 7.25 times 70 divided by our constant of 144. Equals 3.52 and so on. We'll round for our board feet to 3.52. Unit costs can be found on canvas. In our case, Poplar is $1.60 a board foot. $1.60 will go in the unit cost column. Take our board feet times the unit cost. $5.64. For my piece of poplar, that's 7.25 by 70 inches long. Make sure your bill of materials is complete to move on to the next step. Once your bill of materials is complete, rough cut your material on a sliding power miter saw. should have four pieces. Please replace the last piece, if there is one, back in the short way. You want to make sure you have a nice grain match for your clock. You can see that we have over our amount for our rough size. Make sure the surface planer is set up properly. On the surface planer, we need to get one face flat at the very least to be able to safely run through the table saw. Open the blast gate, turn the rollers on a cutter on, use the heel of your hand until the infeed rollers grab the material. Make sure the flattest side is down when using the surfacer. A half turn of the wheel or less is a safe cut to take after all, in this case, your four pieces have gone through. Doing this raises the infeed table and the outfeed table closer to the cutter head, which is once again on the top. You will continue to do that, half turn or less, until you have flat faces. Machine off by hitting the big red button and closing the blast gate for the dust collection system.
After your boards come out of the surfacer, lay them flat on the table and determine what the best seam is going to be for your project. Mark where the glue seam will be and where you're going to rip on the table saw. Any defects that may be in the material also kind of look and see exactly how they're going to come out in the form of your clock. Remember the clock is going to be an octagon shape. In this case, I do believe we can cut out the corners and take care of all the knots. In this case, we're going to set the saw for 7 and 1 8 of an inch, just to trim off just a little bit. Make sure the lines that match the seams are toward the blade. Before doing any gluing, make sure your seams match up. Move over to the glue table and grab three clamps. Rotate the threads to their maximum. Set your material flat against each of the three fronts of the clamps. Tip your first board up with a nice size bead of glue across the edge. Set your material back down, wiggle the glue into the seam. Simply grab the back of the clamp and pull it forward to the back of your board. Start tightening each clamp equally, making sure that your surface is even. Complete the same process for the face of the clock, but just use two clamps. 